Hi guys and welcome to the next video in the January 2022 series. In this activity we're going to be looking at the queries and the reports for activity 3, questions A, B and C. So we're going to look at the first part of the actual exam paper. We can see we've got a query that we need to design that will display alphabetically sorted the list of students' names who study GCSE Maths and the BTEC Information Technology. So in order for us to do this, we're going to need to jump into our create option or on our ribbon, and we're going to choose the create the query design. This will take us into the query design builder, and we're going to select the table we want. Now, as you can see on my screen, I'm toggling the button for add table and remove table from the ribbon up here. If you've not got the tables on the side, just click on this button and they shall appear. So I'm going to choose all four tables in this instance the class table, the enrollment table, student, and the subject. I'm just going to move them around a little bit just so that it's clear for me to see that there are the proper relationships that are expected. And then I'm just going to drag the criteria section at the bottom of the screen up so that we can see it in this video. So we can see from the actual query itself, we're asked to present information of all of the student names who study GCSE Maths and BTEC Information Technology. Now we're going to choose the subject title that we need, but we can do it in two ways. We can either click on the drop down field area, as I've just done, or you can go inside the tables themselves and you can actually double click on them and they shall appear in the criteria at the bottom, as you can see there. Now we have a few options down here. We can see that we've got the field, the table, the sort, the show, criteria and or. Um, we're going to go through that in a minute, but we're just going to add the other information we need to do, which is adding the student surname and the student's forename or first name. We need to do a few things here. As I said, we're going to need to use the sort option and we're going to choose to sort them ascending for the surname and ascending for the forename, um, as we were asked in the question. And then we're going to go inside of the subject title area. I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger for us so that we can enter in the parameters that we need to enter in. And inside the criteria area, we'll see that I'm going to start typing the speech mark. This is where we're going to put in the criteria that we need to do. So the first one will be GCSE Maths. And we're going to close the speech mark on that. And we're going to put the OR word. This is a keyword inside of a search criteria. And we're going to be putting either GCSE Maths OR. And then we're going to open our speech mark, BTEC Information Technology, and then close the speech mark. So at this point, we're going to just go and run our query by clicking on the Run option in our ribbon. And you should see the four listed students that are studying GCSE Maths and BTEC Information Technology. They should all be listed for, by their surname, and then they should be sorted ascending for the forename as well. Now, in here, I'm just going to play around and show you the difference between a capital M for maths and a lowercase m. You can see that the actual criteria will run properly on either upper capitalized or a lowercase. But just be very careful. Obviously, we can make a, a bit of a mistype here and there. And we might put the A in front of the M in maths, as you can see here. And your results will completely skew because, you, obviously, we're looking for specific criteria um, and we need it to be spelt right. Just because it's not got a capitalized letter shouldn't be a problem. So I'm just changing that back there and you should be able to see that that works fine for us. So that's the completion of the first query. What we need to do when we save it, we need to make sure we're saving it using the conventions we, that we discussed in the previous video. So we're going to use the convention of QRY and then I'm going to put an underscore and then I'm just going to call this the class and then I'm going to put in there uh, query A. Um, so that we can separate the queries between query A, query B from the exam paper. Uh, once you've done that, click on OK, and then you should have saved your first query for your first question in the Activity 3. So we're now going to move on to the second of our two queries that we've got created in this exam. Um, and the second query is normally the more complicated of the two. In here, we're going to need to create a query that will calculate the number of students enrolled in each class and then it will give us a message of whether their space is still or not. So we're going to do like we did before. We're going to create a new query in the query design. And we're going to add the tables that I'm clicking here. So we're going to choose the subject, class, and enrollments. These are the only tables we need here. 
Like before, uh, we're going to need to choose which table fields we need in this one. So we're going to choose the subject title. We're then going to go into our ribbon and we're going to choose an option up here for totals. Notice our criteria in the query provide us another, an extra area for us to be able to customize and do what we need to do. So what we're going to be doing now is we're going to go into the next field area inside of our query design and we're going to type in the word number of enrollments. What this will be is it will be a heading that goes inside of the field area of our query when we output it. So as you can see there we're going to have the subject title as one of the field headings and it's going to list them and then we're going to have a heading title of number of enrollments. Now once we put a colon after that what we're going to be doing is we're going to be choosing which field we want to get information from. So we're going to be choosing the student ID. So when we run our, our query and we've got our student title, what it's going to do is we, it's going to have the number of student IDs. Now where we've got the total options, this new option where we've clicked the total option in the ribbon, we have a few options. We can do sum, average, min, max. What we want to do is we want to count up the number of IDs that are present when we do a search on a subject title. So what it should in theory do is count up the number of people that are enrolled in maths or in the BTEC IT. So this is where the totals tab really plays into to hand. So if we run that, what should happen is it will list all of the subjects and we can see that there are uh, one person enrolled on the A level computing and we can see that there are two people enrolled in GCSE computing. So we need to add some more information here. We need to add another special field inside of our query design. And we need to allow the person that runs this query to see whether there are spaces left. So we're going to put in the information of the field being spaces left. That's gonna be our heading or our field. And then we're gonna put the colon. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and grab the information from number of enrollments. So we need to use what's known as an I if statement here. So we're gonna do I if bracket and then we're going to do the square bracket which says that we're going to get a field from somewhere else inside of this document or even in another table and, and we're going to look at the number of enrollments or number of enrollments and then we close the square bracket here's where we put our parameters in to say okay if the value is less than 20 then we're going to put a comma this will allow us then to put our message to the users inside of our query. So after the comma, we're going to put in speech marks, still spaces. And then we're going to close the speech mark. Then we're going to do another comma. And then we're going to do some speech marks. And here we could put the else statement or what would be displayed if there was uh, the value was over 20. And here I'm putting full. And then I'm closing the speech mark. And then close the bracket. And what we need to do uh, finally on this is just change the total to be an expression. We're quickly going to add in class ID from the table class and then we're going to change that to show and then choose that to not be shown. And then if we run this query now, what should happen is it should display to us the values within the, the table itself and show us whether there's still spaces. So as you can see here, when we run our query, we've got the subjects listed and we can see the number of enrollments and then we can see that there are still spaces within those subject areas. We're then going to click on close for this query. We're going to choose yes to save the query. And as we did before in the previous query that we created, we're going to use the prefix of QRY. And then we're going to put an underscore. And then I'm just going to put this as class space query B. Once I click OK, that should then save. And now we have created and completed the query B inside of our exam paper. Next, we're going to move on to the report. The report is a tricky question because we need to create a query for our report because the report needs to show information of suitable titles, subjects, start dates, names of students enrolled, number of the enrolled students and overall enrollment in a class. So we need to find that information out. So we are going to need to create another query. 
So we're gonna go into the create section on our toolbar, open up the ribbon, and then we're gonna jump into the query design. Once we've done the query design, hopefully our add table section is still open, and we're just gonna choose all four tables in this instance. I am gonna just drag them around a little bit so that it's easy for us to see that the relationships are correct. And then I'm going to just move them up to the top here. So the areas we're interested in is the class ID, the start or class start date. We're gonna to need to get information about the subject title. As well as that, we're gonna to need to get some information about the student as well. So here I'm gonna create our own field again, and I'm just gonna put it as student, and then I'm gonna put a colon, and here I'm referring to, in square brackets, student first name. I'm gonna close that square bracket. Then I'm gonna put the ampersand sign, and then I'm going to put a, a speech mark, a space in between another speech mark, and then the ampersand again, and then we're gonna use student underscore surname inside the square brackets. What that's doing is it's uh, essentially getting the values, putting a space between them so that they're not one word, um, and it's uh, appending them together. So if we run that now, you'll see that there's our James Abbott with a space in there, and we can see all of the class IDs, the start dates, the subjects that they're, they're enrolled on. Now, we do need to do some additional information on this one. Um, we need to make sure that they are sorted in an alphabetical way. So we're just gonna go into our design view. We're just gonna click on the class ID and we're gonna set that to ascending so it makes it a little bit easier for us to look at the data. And we can see there that, yep, we've got all of our ones, twos, and threes, and fours, five, six. So what we're gonna do now is we're just gonna click on the X button on this one and we're going to save it and we're gonna give it an appropriate title. So when I save this one, what I'm going to do is as before, yes, I sound like a broken record. We're gonna change the name of this to be QRY underscore, and then we're going to give it an appropriate name. In this instance, I'm just gonna call it report. And then I'm gonna click okay. In this section of the report that we're gonna create, we need to go up to the create option inside of our ribbon and we're going to choose the report wizard. From the report wizard, we should be able to select the query that we've just created. So we're gonna scroll down on the options and we're gonna choose QRY report. When we use the wizard, we can drag over all of the fields by clicking on the double arrows, or we can individually collect them by using the single arrows. The fields that I'm interested in at the moment are going to be class start date, title, and student in this report. Click on next and then we're presented with another window. This another window allows us to choose what sort of, or how we want to view the data. So we're going to be looking at the class table as our primary table, um, and we're gonna be looking at the start date and the title as areas to group. Then we click on next, and then we have an option where we can choose to sort in ascending or descending order. Um, here I'm just gonna leave it as a standard default and when we get to the end part of the wizard, we're going to need to make sure that we change the names that we're gonna use. Instead of it being QRY, we're gonna change it to RPT to represent report and then we're gonna click on modify the design of the report. Here you can see that we're inside of the actual design view and we're gonna do a few simple things by changing the headings and making sure that there's something representative of what's going on in the report rather than leaving it as RPT. So here I'm just gonna put it as class list report. You can and you will lose points if you don't change the formatting of your report to something that looks like it's meaningful. So no underscores. So as you can see here, I'm just getting rid of the underscores inside of my labels. Be careful not to change the text boxes um, with the underscores, you leave those as they are because that's going to pull over the information and the data that we need. We're going to click on the group option here and you can see we get an extra bar at the bottom. I'm just going to toggle the more option for us and that will allow us to add a footer section inside of our report. 
So I'm just going to turn that on and you can see here we've got a, a class ID footer section. This should allow us, when we put a text box in from our controls area up the top, um, it should allow us to be able to count up the number of students inside of a group of a subject. So I'm just going to add in a text box area here. Um, it comes with a label once you drag it out. I'm just going to change the label to be number in class. And then I'm going to go into the unbound area and I'm going to put some information in here that will allow us to count the number of students. So here I'm just putting equal. So this cell is going to equal. And then we're going to use the count option. And inside of our brackets, we're going to put some square brackets with the student identifier. And then we're going to close that. That should allow us to count up, as I say, the number of students in that section of the date. So what we're going to do is just going to run it and we're going to check to see if that's worked for us. So go on to the report view and you can see here that inside of each class on each day, you can see that it's counted up the number of students in that class. But what we need to do now is we need to calculate the grand total of enrolled students. So we're going to go back into design view and we're going to go to the bottom of the footer. So the report footer down here, it's automatically collapsed. So I'm just going to drag that out a little bit for ourselves. And then I'm going to do exactly the same as I did in the class ID footer area. I'm going to drag in a text box and that text box will have again its own label. So what I'm going to do is just drag it into the middle and I'll edit the label to be total enrollments. Again, as we did before, just going to go inside of the unbound area. We're going to put in the equal sign. We're going to then count again. We're going to do a curly bracket and a square bracket and we're going to do student and then close off the curly bracket and the square bracket and we're going to run it. What this should do is because it's in the footer and it's outside of that section ID, it's going to count up all of the IDs that are there and it gives us the grand total of nine. Now we're going to create our PDF export that we're required to do for our report. There are a number of ways we can do this. If we click and open up the report and then go to the ribbon and click on external data, we do have an option for PDF or XPS. If we click on that button, we can then choose where we want to locate our save. If we choose our desktop or anywhere, click on publish, we will be displayed with an option to say save export steps. Uh, we're going to click close on that. And what should happen as we left the option to display the actual PDF open for us, um, we're going to go to our web page where it's going to show us the preview of that PDF. And as you can see, because it was set to one page, we can see that we have our one page PDF and that should meet the requirements of the exam board when you create this report. The alternative way to achieve this is by closing the actual report itself and then navigating to your area where your queries and tables and reports are. And you can right click on it and choose the export as PDF or XPS. It follows the same process as we did in the ribbon before. And as you can see, because we've already got one, it's asking us to replace it. Again, the save steps option is there for us and you can simply click close. Here you can see I'm showing you the same PDF as was before because the process produces the same PDF output as required. I hope this has been useful for you in activity three and some feedback from you guys about the audio has been heard and hopefully this audio is much better. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Thanks.